Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we're continuing our journey printing in the darkroom. There's something I wanted to cover that I think is quite important and something that if you do darkroom prints, you should be well aware of and keep under control. And that's something called chemical fogging. It affects your paper in the developer. Now, for short lengths of time in developer, there's not going to be any chemical fogging. It's very unlikely indeed. After all, when we make the developers, we're adding anti-fogging agents such as potassium bromide or BZT. Now, what happens is the longer the paper is in the developer, the more chance there is of fogging. And something that's also interesting is that the fogging, the chemical fogging, seems to affect the highlights more than the shadows. And I'm wondering if it's something to do with the fact that the highlights are full of unexposed silver halide crystals. After all, they're going to be white on the paper. They haven't had much exposure, if any, to light. So they're not going to develop normally. But the chemical fogging seems to attack those more than the shadows, which have had a lot of exposure to light and therefore are all developing. So I guess because they're developing, there's less chance of chemical fogging. So how do we work out how long we can develop our paper for before chemical fogging begins? Well, there's a very easy technique to do this and it's worth doing it with your paper of choice and your paper developer of choice. So you always know how long you can leave that paper in that developer before fogging will begin. Now, hold on, let's just back up a second. How come I'm leaving my paper for so long in the developer? Well, that's because I use a system myself called factorial development. It was invented by a man called Watkins and it was designed actually for printing, uh, sorry, for developing plates. And what he discovered was when you start to see the image forming on the plate, you can apply a factor to that depending, he knew there were different factors depending on what um, developing agents you were using but you applied a factor of a multiplication factor to the time that you started to see the image appear. When you'd applied that, you knew when your plate was going to be fully developed and you could then stop and fix. Well, with paper, it's the same. When you start to see a mid-tone on the paper begin to appear very faintly, but it's beginning to appear, you can apply a factor to that length of time and know when you're going to be fully developed. Now, I personally apply a factor of five. So if I see my midtone start to appear after say 20 seconds, I multiply that by five and I know that in a hundred seconds that paper will be developed. As the session moves on in the darkroom, the developer starts to oxidize in the open tray and it also starts to weaken as I'm using it more and more. So the length of time it takes for that mid-tone to start to appear on the paper gets longer. So after a while, it takes 30 seconds before I start to see a mid-tone appearing on the paper in the developing tray. I apply my factor of five so now it's two and a half minutes until full development is achieved. So it's a very useful thing to use factorial development because it means that your prints will be the same quality from fresh new developer that you started to use in the darkroom and old developer that you've been using throughout the day uh, by the end of the day. Or even if like me, you bottle that paper developer and use it again the next day which most developers you can, you'll know that, okay, it's oxidized a little bit more, but I can use my factor of five again from when I see those mid-tones to start to appear. The downside is it's longer in the developer and the longer in the developer, the more opportunity for this chemical fogging to start to attack your highlights. So it's really worth doing this little test to find out when your developer of choice and when your paper of choice starts to chemically fog 
in the developer. So let's get on and actually have a look at how we do this test to work out how long I can leave my paper in. I have here two strips of photographic paper um, and I'm going to use these two strips to find out my chemical fogging time for my paper developer. So with these two strips I'm going to cut them into small squares like this like so and I'm keeping them face down so they won't be affected by the safe light although I've tested my safe light anyway I have a very dark dark room um, to protect the paper from fogging by the safe light I am only interested in chemical fogging here here they are they're all cut up into these reasonably sized squares and I'm going to now write on the back of them I'm going to write one two three four and so on five six seven and I've written them in nice big writing on the back of the paper not on the front on the back I'm now going to put these into my developer and I'm going to develop them all now it's important you also take another piece that you have not written a number on and put it straight in the fixer that is your reference piece so let me get a piece for the fixer. There we are. And on this one, I'm not going to put any number on at all. I'm just going to put that straight in the fixer so it becomes my reference white. Basically, paper, the white of the paper. I will then see which of these is going to chemically fog. Now, where it says number one, I don't know can, if you can see that. That will be one minute in the developer. I will stop and fix it. Number two will have two minutes in the developer and I'll stop and fix it. And so on. Number three, three minutes development, stop and fix. Right up, in this case, to seven, stop and fix after seven minutes in the developer. Now, I expect that numbers one, two, three, and maybe even four will show no signs of chemical fogging. It might be even that we go into five and six, but by seven minutes, I'm expecting to start to notice some chemical fogging and we'll develop them now and then we'll have a look at the results. And here are the results of the test. Now I've laid them out in order. This is the reference white and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minutes. And looking at them like that, there's very little difference, isn't there? It's very hard to see. You may just start to see a little bit of difference, but it's probably quite hard for you on the video. It's certainly hard even here in the dark room with a special light shining down on these so that I can see it clearly. But here's the trick. Pick up your reference white. Here's the reference white here. And you can see no number on the back. So this one went straight in the fixer. And then what I can do is lay this one on top of the other ones. So that one, there's no difference. Two minutes, no difference. Three minutes, no difference. Four minutes maybe a difference, hard to tell. Five minutes, definitely a difference. Can you see that? The reference white is whiter than the five minute test. Six minutes, definitely. It's a kind of yellow, it's yellower than the reference white and seven minutes, quite a difference. Hard to see if you don't use the reference piece next to it, but as soon as you place it next to it, you can see there's a difference. And what that is, is chemical fogging. So going back, that one is different, that one's different. 
that one's different just that one is probably the same I think so we're looking at this one here and that's number one two three four five so at five minutes the paper in this developer is starting to chemically fog so my highlights are starting to yellow and fog up after five minutes plus so there we are I know the maximum time I can have paper in this developer is five minutes now I'm deliberately not telling you what the developer is because it doesn't matter this is very important you will be using a different developer from me most likely so you'll get different results but it's important that you do this test and learn the maximum time your paper can be in the developer before you start to chemically fog your highlights I hope this is an interesting video for you next week I'm going to show you how to test your safe lights but I wanted this week to cover this topic because it's quite important I think for you to understand about chemical fogging and uh, the chance of that happening to you so thanks very much for watching I want to give a big thumbs up to my patrons they bring you this channel every week they enable me to bring you this knowledge and help you in your darkroom and in your photography so thank you guys so much and big thumbs up please give me a thumbs up on the video subscribe to the channel to see more stuff like this and I'll see you next week